Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, April 7, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We got a lot of stuff on the docket, more than just a bread box full of stuff. The first thing we're going to do is take an assessment of the daily chart. Where are we now? What's going on around the tape? So we'll take it from a long view. And don't worry about those lines on the screen. They're going to come up when we review inside the numbers. And by the way, it's not lost in anybody that the low of day today was 443.53. Remember, 443.50. Let me just throw this out there. Are there any accidents or coincidences? And the answer is, no, there isn't. So check this out. The low yesterday was 443.47. The low today was 443.53. Three cents below yesterday, three cents above today. What? My number, 443.50. Tested it yesterday, ran a retest today, and then did what? Reversed to the upside. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that reverse to the upside business. But first, we're going to do is take a look at the long view. And what they've done, essentially, is come down into the 20-period moving average on time, bounce off of it the following day. However, was not able to finish over and above yesterday's high. Is that important? Well, it's not the end of the world, but it would have helped the bull case but we have more stuff. Stay tuned. Let's look at both sides. Remember, we're the umpire calling balls and strikes. So on one hand, they could still be running time off the clock down here, make some kind of a bearish wedgish pattern, and go lower. Now, if they went lower, the 50-period moving average is likely off the table as garden variety support any longer. They've come too close, spent a couple of days over it, Therefore, it changes the complexity, the complexion, the reasoning behind the 50-period moving average being the type of support that it would have been, for example, yesterday. So next week, tomorrow, not so much as yesterday. So therefore, what would come into view would be that 436, 435 area we discussed last night. That's if the market ended up turning around and going back in the southern direction. Now, let's look at the other side. Remember, umpire, now we're looking at the bull case. What did they do today? They came up short of a gap. Here's the gap, 451.03. And by the way, speaking of 451.03, let's talk a little bit about swing trades because there's a method to the madness. So folks that are members of the Lazy Swing Trader, we picked up options on the S&P 500 or the SPY yesterday. Where? down near the lows. Now, the first target was actually the gap at 451. Now, look at this. They came up short. So what happens when they come up short? So we can look at it a couple of ways. The market's weak. They couldn't get to the gap. They're going to go back in the other direction. That's one way to look at it. Or it came up short. That's not really the destination. They're really going to go slightly higher or a lot higher. And therefore, The gap right now, because they came up short, isn't necessarily the same type of overhead resistance that it once was, for example, today. Hence, I moved up the price target on the trade in the afternoon. Everybody got an email accordingly. Could they pull back on Friday to throw everybody for a loop? Of course they can. Whatever they're doing on Friday, inside the number members will have a beat on the information the numbers starting at zero dark 30. Remember, this trade is essentially a full stack. Now, they don't all work out, certainly not 100% of the time. The majority work out, a lot of them work out, at least this one is beginning to work out. Two more were posted on the board today. They're also beginning to work out. We have what's called a head start in the position. Here's an hourly chart. So here's a little bit of a lesson. We went over this yesterday and watch what happens today. They got above this breakdown candle high, 447.59. Look what happened after they did that. But that's not it. We had a different number, 445.85 from inside the numbers. We knew once they started getting over that number, that was the tail of two tapes. 
Below it was bearish, above it was bullish. Below it, they went down and ran a test of 443.50. After that, and they started to bounce up. Once they got back over the pivot, it was bull mode. Check it out. Early thoughts. Happy Thursday. Wake up to a little green on the screen at zero dark 30. She's trying to bounce. Let's get down to the numbers. 445.85 is our early pivot. Below on candle closes, and the door will open for 444.60. Below that, it's a retest of 443.50. Below that would be a real-time type of decision. The other side, above the pivot, 445.85, the door is open for a test of 447.85, and then yesterday's high, and then into no man's land, which they ended up doing. So let's get the visual on the table. The three lines on your screen horizontally are 445.85, that's the pivot, 444.60, that's the number that was cited in the morning notes in the pre-market early zero dark 30 notes, and then 443.50 is the lower line. The vertical right of it is today's activity. So look at what happened. They bounce around above the pivot, they get below the pivot, so where would they go next? 444.60, what did they do? Went to 444.60, bounced right back up to the pivot. They failed, back to the same place, then back to 443.50, and then back up. So pretty much, and you'll see in the notes, this was what was prescribed. You don't know exactly what the market's going to do beforehand, but once it starts doing something, and then it gets below or above a certain thing, guess what? It opens the door for another thing. Nine o'clock, getting close to post time, they were already hanging around the pivot. That tells me the pivot was likely right. That adds confidence and a little bit of confirmation to boot. It's the same routine. The notes sometimes are repetitive based on what's going on. Need to want to reiterate numbers so that they become second nature to the members. Now check this out. Above the pivot, 445.85 is the bull case. Above 447.85 opens the door for the next number, 447.85. Now look. They try for it, they make a high of 447.75 and fall back down. To me, that becomes unfinished business. And look what happens later. Look what happened when they got to 447.85. They got there, but they couldn't get through right away. They had to eat some time off the clock. Again, that tells you the number was important. So when they don't get to it early, I know it's unfinished business. Doesn't tell me they're going to come all the way back down. But what it does tell me is, if they're headed back up, they're going to finish the unfinished business. Let's move along, see what else we have in the notes. Above the pivot is bullish, below the pivot is not. That was basically the theme of the morning. Put a little picture on the board today. So they were bouncing around, and I noticed this on a five-minute chart. It was a trend line. You know, above the trend line, things begin to get bullish. Below the trend line, and they can begin to creep down drip down. Now here's another lesson. Let's talk about this for a second. Since there's not a lot going on from activity and volatility, here's a short-term chart. Spiking it is one thing, meaning the trend line. Getting above and staying above is another, and the bull case from another perspective. That was just an additive from what we've been discussing in terms of being above the pivot. As long as they're above the pivot, that's fine, but now you have something else to hang your hat on. They have to get above this trend line. Here's the trend line. We cleaned up the chart a little bit. So this is a replica of what it was. So here, they hadn't spiked it yet when I sent that out. And then they spiked it a little bit while later, but they couldn't sustain above. And look what happened. Look how the market respected that trend line. Look how it rode that trend line until what? Until it started closing candles above. Then what happened? Back to another important number, back to the pivot a retest of the pivot, or a little above the pivot, and then they took off once they were above the pivot in the afternoon. And we have something else to say about that too. You'll see it in the notes. Let's move along, see what else we have. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in here intraday, meaning inside the numbers. It depends on what's going on in the market, but I'm trying to provide lessons, teach, provide the numbers, a little bit of something for everybody. At the time, we had divergences. The IWM and transports and some other stuff that I follow were down. So therefore, I'm looking at the SPY at the time 
was up, other stuff is down. What ended up happening, the short story is everything got pulled down. So what we say here is the divergences are going to resolve themselves one way or the other. Then later on, they all turned around. Let's see what else we have. It's all about the pivot. By 941, we have our answer. So they were headed lower. Door opens for 443.50 in short. 11 o'clock, no change. Below the pivot, it's 443.50. We don't know that they will get there, but the bulls are not in charge unless they get back above the pivot and stick. You see a theme? Bulls are in control above the pivot. Bears are in control below the pivot. Here's another chart. Bearish flaggish thing. They hadn't yet gone down. We know the result. We don't have to go recreate the thing on the chart. You know they went lower. That's just what happened. Unless they get back above the pivot. That was it. That was the whole thing. 443.53 low against the target of 443.50. Not bad for a rookie. If that holds and they recapture the pivot on candle closes, look out above. Back to the chart. Here's your pivot. It's our top line. What happened? Look out above. What more could you be looking for than what's provided inside the numbers if you're active trading the market during the trading day? Remember, 2 p.m., 1.09 p.m. post that said, look out above. It's just a reminder in case anybody missed it. What about stocks on the move? There was only three on the board. Remember, we're not in earnings season yet. It's coming up soon. Netflix, ConAgra, and W, which is short for Wayfair. Two out of the three did not hit their price target or entry objectives. They're off the board. There are no trades. By the way, this one was given out in the live room today. It was Carnival. Wouldn't get going right away, but ultimately it finally worked, meaning the number worked. And then Uber was another one that was also given out in the room. They didn't do it in the manner in which, but the number worked anyway. But here is the Netflix trade. 354.50 on the board, bright and early. They didn't come in in the picture-perfect way, but the number worked. They went up about 10 bucks. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, they came into the number we discussed last night. They reversed off of it, and simply, it's showtime for the bulls to get something going and get back up above those moving averages, fill that gap and get going. If they can't and they start getting below 197 hourly and then daily, it's look out for the IWM and likely the rest of the markets. Be the umpire knowing and calling balls and strikes. The IWM is my favorite market leading indicator. It was not leading the market in the upward direction today. It was lagging in terms of getting to an important number and reversing. So we'll see what happens. It's definitely showtime for the IWM. What about the folks down at the transportation department? What do you know? Finally got a reversal, a tail candle. They ran a test near the lows, not quite at the lows, and they reversed. Is it a one-day wonder or not? Closing above yesterday's closing price is a small win for the bull side of the ledger. It's not an end-all, be-all. They got bludgeoned. They got taken out behind the woodshed, shot three times, left for dead. They're teetering with the Irene number. It's a problem for the transports. They either need a quick rescue operation or it's a problem across the rest of the market. Today is an indication that they're trying to turn around. It's not a full-on turnaround. Remember what we said yesterday. Here's the weekly chart. This is going to be important by Friday's close. Do they close above or below this breakup candle low? 15,000 and a little bit. If they close above it, that's bullish. If they close below it, it's not. Taking the view a little bit deeper, they ran a test finally of the 20 period moving average on the monthly chart. Now they came close before, so it's not the same as it once was. Is this the only test they need to do, or did they come up short before, and now they're going to blow through the 20-period moving average? Only time will tell. This is a monthly chart, and we don't really have to worry about it because we have other stuff that we're watching, namely Irene. What about the Q people, the folks out in Silicon Valley? They're still finding support around that 350-150. They spiked it today, hit the 50-period moving average, breakup candle low, 
garden variety stuff, bounce back up, closed above an important spot, guess what? That's bullish for now. Close back below, below the 50, that's the other side of the ledger. The question is, what are they going to do going forward? Are they going to run a bearish flag pattern down here? Are they going to run up to fill the gap? Are they going to get below the 50? What we need is another day of evidence. They've got to get above yesterday's high, 356.78, in order to get into no man's land to work up to fill the gap. That's basically the first order of business. How about the XLF, the financials? Filled the gap, came up short of my number, but put in a pretty decent-sized tail candle in an on-time type of situation. So across the board, a lot of the variety of markets are telling us they're trying to make a turn. Doesn't all happen at once. There's fake-out operations that take place. Trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crews show up to pull the rug out. But from a reading the chart, reading the tape perspective, they're giving indications of forming some kind of a low. Not every market, not every chart, but there's enough of them. Smash mouth, fill the gap, reversed. The next question is, do they hang around down here or can they get going? It's showtime for the bulls across the board. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That's true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.